On today's episode, I'm going to show you the Solvo SV08. It's a very large printer, but it's also very frustrating to use. I'll explain it all on today's Film It Friday. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. My SV08 was given to the channel by Solvo for me to try out. Now this is a pre-release version, so I don't know how much the latest version is different, but this particular one had some issues. It comes partially assembled and then you have to build the frame. So there's arms to build and then you put the top, but this Allen wrench screwdriver made it a lot easier. So I got the frame together and then the carriage unit is mostly assembled. So then you got to put this inside of it and connect everything up. And I got that done and then you install the hot end assembly. So I did all the adjustments I recommended, but then I tried to level it and I could not get this to level properly. And so I ended up actually banging this thing into place. I was off by just one eighth of an inch. So I ended up just hitting the side of it like this on both sides. It made the stepper motor jump and then it was level. And the funny thing is later on I found out the stepper motor actually had some bent pins. So I had a bad connection. So that was part of the problem. This is an open source clipper based machine, so it's supposed to print fast. And on their USB drive, they have a 12 minute benchy, so I decided to print that. Now, this isn't the quietest machine, but I know this is a fast print, but I've printed a similar print on the K1 Max, on the Bamboo machines, and it came out a lot better than this. This thing is really kind of rough. When I look at it really close up, I see lines on the sides, there's extra plastic, there's uneven walls. So I decided to just print another one. Maybe it was just, you know, a bad print. It did get better, but still wasn't great. They had a slower bench sheet on their USB drive, so I decided to print that, but it wouldn't stick to the bed. I tried it again, same results. So I decided to just clean this bed and start over. I wanted to push its limits a little bit, so I decided to print this scissor jack or this platform jack, which is a difficult print to print in place, but my other clipper machines printed it without issue. I also wanted to try some carbon fiber PLA, which requires a little higher temperature, so this is a dual test. I'm really hitting this thing to see if it can respond. And I was happy to see it was printing beautifully for the first, I don't know, 15, 20 layers, and then it came apart. It was still stuck to the bed, but it just, something knocked it and it would not finish the print. I noticed the spool moves a lot on this because it's on a roller. It happened in the previous prints, but was really bad on this one. It almost tangled up. I decided to remove the spinning spool holder because I've seen this issue before and go to a stationary spool holder similar to what you see on an Ender 3. I also switched to a PLA that's easier to print because it's designed for higher speed printers. In a previous video, I took a large Hot Wheels track that I couldn't find anywhere and I scanned it in so I could reproduce it and print it. And I wanted to print it on this big printer back when I released that video. And my thought was this isn't a bed slinger so I don't have to worry about it moving back and forth, but I still got terrible quality at the top of the print. I watched the top of this print to see if it was moving and it wasn't, but something was moving and causing this. So I kept trying and then eventually I had it pop off. So I had to clean the bed and start over. And after I cleaned the bed and tried to reset everything, it got worse. So I gave up on this printer. So I switched to my Creality K1 Max and I'm not saying it was a perfect print, but it was significantly better than what I was getting off the SV08 and it allowed me to make my video. I tried to communicate with Solvolt to get some kind of answers, but I was getting nowhere. And then they publicly chastised me on Twitter or X for not releasing a video. So I said, take this file, slice it, and send me the G code so I can print it. So I used their G code, I printed it again, and I even used the filament that worked on the K1 Max. And I ended up with the same results on my machine. Now after the way they treated me publicly, I decided to let this sit aside for a while and collect some dust. But then I decided I wanted to print this Eiffel Tower paper towel holder, or Eiffel Towel, as you could call it, for my daughter. The overall print is too tall, so I decided to just print the base. And I got this far, and then it failed. So I decided to clean the bed and try again. But then I ran into a new problem. The filament was clogged inside. So I heated it up to ABS temperature, but I still couldn't push it out with a metal rod. So at that point, I had to take this hot end apart. So I took the cover off, and then I noticed this screw was loose. This is a screw that holds the hot end. It was loose the whole time. This is probably what was causing that problem on the tracks. 
And I never got this advice from Solval. So I ended up taking the whole thing apart and found out there's a little piece of PTFE tubing inside this thing that got clogged. So I cleaned that out, put it all back together, tightened up the hot end, and when I did that, I noticed it was very solid, and I got a complete print. But once I looked closer, the arch was terrible. The cooling on this machine is is awful. It should not have left it this rough on an arch. Maybe in the center, but not in the arch. So I decided to just print it upside down like this with the rest of the tower, not even thinking that the feet needed support as well. I was so frustrated with this machine at this point. The upside down print is clearly better in the arch, but when I looked at the cross beams, it's worse on the upside down print than it is on the straight up. I, this makes no sense. Just the cooling is terrible. I was able to clean it up enough and glue it together to give my daughter an Eiffel towel holder. So now that I figured out that that screw was loose, that could have been causing a problem, I decided to start over and just print a benchy. But when I ran it, the hot end moved to this back corner and froze. I ended up resetting everything and got it working. I ran the auto level, it went multiple times around and adjusted the bed. And then I had it print a benchy and I could see it wasn't coming out very good. In fact, I ended up peeling it off the nozzle because I stopped the print. There's basically the benchy. So I think I'm done playing with this machine, but this is the video Sovel wanted. I'm being honest with you, this one is a dud. It didn't work for me. Now I have to admit, I like this Eiffel towel holder, and I wondered, could you print it professionally? Well, PCBWay offers that option. They have a 3D printing service. Just click on 3D printing, upload your file. So I uploaded the whole Eiffel towel holder, and then I looked at it, it looked good on the viewer, and so then I just select quantity of one and choose your material. In resin, $115.53, including shipping. PLA, same price. PETG, same price. ASA is a bit more at $400, $401. But I could print it in aluminum. Is that amazing? $1,325. I'm not spending that much, but you could do it. You can even do it in stainless steel for a lot more money. But the fact that I can do it is so amazing at the same place where I can get 10 circuit boards for $5 or $29 assembly service. So if you're interested in professional 3D printing or circuit boards, check out PCBWay.com. I want to give a special shout out to my Patreon supporters, also my thanks members, and anyone who uses my affiliate links. All that support makes my videos possible. So thank you very much. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or a membership at thangs.com. And if nothing else, click on the logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hellebuck's Electronic Products and Filament Friday.